It's a cancer that is most fatal for Canadian women. Currently, 17,000 women have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Now, that has one local group doing whatever they can to raise awareness of the importance of early screening detection. It was all part of the inaugural Vermilion Walk of Hope. Elise Cox has more. <laughs> Lila Fee snipped the ribbon to declare the first walk of hope in Vermilion. As a woman living with ovarian cancer, it's a blessing to have her family and community here to bring light to the disease. For me to know that these people are actually here to support me with my constant battle with ovarian cancer is, um, is just humbling, it really is. These women banded together to bring awareness to this cancer. There's no screening test for ovarian cancer, so we want to get the word out there and get everyone out and raise some funds and get some research going. It's awesome for me to see women who are affected by the disease, who are doing well, who are um, inspired to raise money for research. The community stood behind them every step of the way with reminders of their purpose along their path. Our first event in Edmonton had fewer people than this. So I'm, I'm totally in awe of what I see when I came here today. And the support they receive means everything because ovarian cancer is the most fatal of women's cancers. The challenging thing with ovarian cancer compared to a lot of other cancers is that um, it's much harder to cure. So the walk is promoting early detection. The biggest challenge being that 75% of women when they're diagnosed are um, in advanced stages of the disease. But the support they received today has Lila Fee hopeful of the change to come. I'm so excited about future years. Hundreds of people came out to walk for the cause but no word yet on how much they've raised so far. Elise Cox, Newcap News. Hundreds of kids in and around the border city will have a shiny new toy under the Christmas tree this year thanks to the kindness of some motorcyclists. This was the scene yesterday as nearly 150 bikers rode in the second annual toy run. Organizers tell Newcap News they raised around $23,000 plus 5,000 toys. The donations will go to the local Salvation Army, which will use the money for several items, including Christmas hampers and gift wrap. The toys will be wrapped and delivered around Christmas to families who may not have been able to afford much around the season. Now, it's believed this event will help about 400 families. The Saskatchewan Wildlife Federation received a generous donation from a local man. The Lloyd Minster and District Fish and Game Association celebrated the dedication of the Burt Smith land to the Saskatchewan Wildlife Federation. Burt left the land in his will because he was a firm believer in conservation. He was always showing us uh, different tracks and animals, uh, birds. He, uh, we could not harm nature. The land won't be able to be developed or destroyed so wildlife can thrive. The uh, Sask Wildlife Federation Habitat Trust Program has over 60,000 acres like this now uh, since 1978 and uh, really that's just a dro drop in the bucket of, of what habitat would be required to maintain healthy populations for a long time. The donation will have a big impact on our community. To learn more about the Saskatchewan Wildlife Federation, you can visit their website. A handful of people spent a part of their afternoon cleaning up litter on Highway 44. This was the scene this afternoon on the highway near 42nd Street. Hundreds of flyers littered the area, so a few members of the local Rotaract Club came out to do a little cleanup. To spend 20 minutes, half an hour to clean it up, yeah, it's... it's, it's uh... It's not fun, it's not something we'd want to do on a Sunday, but hey, it, it, uh, it shows that uh, we're here, uh, the community's here to, to make it look good. It's not known how the litter got there. Well, we've all heard the adage, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And there is a way to re redecorate that so-called unwanted loot, 
and you can do it on a budget and in an environmentally friendly way. It's called upcycling, a process of converting a piece of furniture or material that is no longer needed into something that can be used for another purpose. My friend Anna got it for me from Value Village, the base here, for 50 cents. It was wood and brass and a quick coat of spray paint and then we added some hats to it. And for about $35, I have a new light fixture. It's stories like this that get the inner interior decorator excited. Instead of spending a lot of money on a new light fixture, she updated an old unwanted one from a used store. This local interior decorator loves the idea of recycling old furniture and material into something new and fresh. It's kind of about thinking outside the box. It's called upcycling, taking something old and unusable and giving it a second chance. It keeps things out of the landfill um, and it keeps product from being becoming useless or unusable. A product that may have lost its use in one respect can become usable in another respect. Torreson says the ReStore here in Lloydminster is a great place to get started. There's all sorts of inspirations every corner and what inspires one person, the next one won't even be able to see. Take for instance this old hall closet door. It was turned into a three-in-one unit. It's a chalkboard, a coat rack and a bench. Upcycling is the idea of not just recycling but taking a product that existed and giving it a new and better way of using it. Torreson says that anybody can upcycle. It is so easy. This is this is lets the crafter come out in you. You definitely get to just play with it, look at it, think about it, turn it around, find another use for it. Bobcats playing the Bonneville Pontiacs. The Orange and Black showed their rookie nerves Friday when they allowed three goals in the first period. They were hoping all that was behind them now. The Cats were looking good in their new third jerseys while head coach Ryan Parent was looking focused in his first game at the Civic. First period, rookie Riley O'Connor forgets about the puck and the punts nearly make him pay for it. Moments later, the veteran Grant Baker lays the body at center. Fellow Cat D-man Lyndon Springer would head to the box for tripping shortly after though. Jackson Dudley capitalizes on the PP. But four minutes later, Matty Marcino responds. The highest scoring returning player has the Cats only two goals this year. Second period, Marcino appears to put himself offside Play continues, Springer just keeps the puck onside again. Travis Wellman scores a softie to give the Cats their first lead of the year. Ten minutes later, more Marcinot. 3-1 Bobcats halfway through the game. Punts look for a spark, but little Lyndon Lewis takes down Alex Smith. And once out of the box, Lewis gets sprung on a breakaway, but can't convert. Third period, 3-2 Cats, Pontiacs with two shots on Chase Martin before Ty Carey buries one in the empty cage. Tie game with five minutes left. <laughs> Captain Casey Knight hits iron, still tied. Back the other way, Bobcats bobble the puck in their own end. Chase Martin bails the D out. With just over three minutes left, the Bobcats D can't move the puck up again. Tanner Dusick finds Locke Muller in front, and that's all she wrote. 4-3 Pontiac's win. Yeah, I think we just got a little too fancy uh, late in the game. And I mean, we, we need to simplify our game at clutch times, and, and uh, that'll make us a much more effective team all around. Uh, not disappointed, no, just mental errors. we got to become mentally tougher, and uh, you know that, that'll progress as uh, the season progresses. I don't want to say nerves because that's not an excuse, but just guys not having their head up and not identifying plays before they happen. And... The Lakeland Rustlers men's and women's soccer teams opened their season at home yesterday. The women were in over their heads, losing 4-0 to the Red Deer Queens. The men hoped to better that result in the afternoon against the Red Deer Kings. Teams tied 1-1 after the first half. Kings look to strike early in the second, finding space to set up an outside shot. The strike is on target, but Kyle Benson just gets his glove on it to keep the game tied. Rustlers change that moments later. Matty Marilainen stays onside and softly tucks the ball in the far corner. His second goal of the game still needs to work on that celebration, though. Kings with a free kick, deflection in front, looks good, but is kept out. But the visitors finally find room over Benson's mitts. 
That was an absolutely perfect goal, tied back up at two. Moments later, red card gives the Kings a penalty kick. I guess that went in. Kings lead for the first time. Rustlers now down a man two. But that doesn't matter. All they needed was one guy, Matty Marilainen. He scores his third of the match. Game ends tied at three. Rustlers not happy about that. Yeah, it was uh, not so bad off the start. And then, I don't know, kind of let off. And guy got red carded and kicked off. So stepped it up, kept her in her. Guys just started pushing harder when we were short a guy and made the best of a bad situation, I guess. Um, we had the game kind of as we were wanting it. And uh, at the end of the day, we made bad decisions. Uh, got a red card about eight minutes into the second half. Uh, mental lapses by that player, bad awful decisions which letting down his teammates um, and that put us in a bad position um, obviously playing about 35 minutes with with a man down I'll give the rest of the guys credit for uh, you know quickly letting up two goals and fighting their way back into it and giving themselves a chance to win the Lloyd Minster Mustangs have started the 2012 Wheatland Bantam Football League on a winning note yesterday they crushed the Cold Lake Royals 31 to 1 despite being a fairly fresh faced team just 11 players from last year's Mustangs team return this year. That means 20 guys on the orange and blue are brand new. You know, it was going to be a rebuilding year for us, and we kind of knew that. So I'm pretty happy with the way it went today. And they kind of got the, rid of the nerves there in the first half, and the second half turned it on. A big part of the team's success in the season opener was one of those rookie starters, quarterback Kirk Hahn. Well, you know, I, I got enough confidence in him that uh, I gave him the go-ahead to call some audibles if he saw a defensive formation that he didn't really like. He actually audibled a couple plays in himself, so he did pretty good. <laughs> the Stangs have just one returning receiver, but any doubts on the wings were erased by the play of first-year player Garrett Krasinowski. <laughs> It was a blast. In the off season, taunts us that I didn't get to play. It was just pumped to get out here. The Han Grzanowski connection has clicked instantly, with the pair hooking up for two touchdowns against the Royals. Uh, we were good. We worked out a lot in the summer, so we're he knows how I can catch, he knows where to put him, he knows how best how good I can catch. And Krasinowski had more reason to celebrate his coming out party than just a win and big offensive output. His big debut came on his 14th birthday. Oh, I'm the happiest I've ever been. If the Stangs play, if the Stangs play from week one is any indication, expect more happy days to come for the orange and blue.